So I think 2K has it out for me, because when I was playing the simulation game, we went on a three game winning streak against the Raptors, Thunder, and the Spurs. How the hell do we even do that? And then we beat the T-Wolves and the Celtics, this is the worst tank job ever. Or maybe not, we're still among the bottom of the league, we don't have the worst record, and in fact the Lakers, as of right now, will be getting their pick back from us, so... The simulation isn't being beautiful for us right now. But anyway, on to some game plan stuff. Nick Stauskas might be the truth, and as a result, I want to get him some more individual plays, get him running off of screens, and also, if they don't work, they uh, could potentially turn into pick and rolls so the offense just doesn't die, you know? But besides that, we've seen this season that um, Jaleel Okafor as well as Joel Embiid have been our two best options when scoring in the paint. And Nerlens Noel has been having kind of a tough time scoring at least, uh, missing some shots around the rim. So I figure, let's see if Nerlens can really be a piece in our offense, and we're just going to run a whole bunch of pick and rolls with him. And, and I'll be honest with you all, as of right now, the big man who is losing the race for me is Jaleel Okafor. Yeah, he's been scoring, but the lack of defense is pretty real, and I'd say, as of right now, the lineup that I'd want to roll with is Nerlens Noel at center and then Joel Embiid at power forward, but they are going to need some, you know, more molding for that to happen, especially Embiid, and Okafor could still win me over. But as of right now, we're going to see Nerlens Noel at running some pick and rolls, see if he can be good, and we're facing the New York Knicks, so... This is a game we could potentially win. The games that I'm playing are games that I think we can actually win. So, we'll see how this goes. And you'd think against the Knicks, the main priority would be stop Carmelo Anthony, but we decided to just leave him completely wide open. Robert Covington was trying there. He's in the starting lineup now, finally. He was trying, didn't really work out, but Nerlens didn't even have to run a pick and roll for him on that one. The flat top just said, I'm going to score on Przingis real quick. I like it. I like it a lot, in fact. Jaleel, ooh boy. You know, just because Jaleel may be losing in the race for me, that doesn't mean I don't notice the things he can do well, which is scoring, but Robin Lopez had other ideas, and then Carmelo Anthony makes me call a timeout early on. And I barely ever call a timeout, so you know it's a big deal when I call one this early. We can't defend Jose Calderon running to the basket, so that's a great sign. Saric already in the game, and we've seen Dario hit jumpers, but he's got something like this in his game as well. Dario Saric, man, he's too valuable. You know, the last thing I needed was another quality front court player to be added into this equation, but when a dude's that good, you gotta play him. Shout out to Sixer fans, you'll be able to see him play next season. He'll probably average like four points. Maybe he won't, I don't know. I miss a three-pointer with TJ McConnell. It made sense in the moment. And then, uh, the zinger. Oh boy. Do you see that height difference between Przingis and Cannon? It was pretty damn ridiculous. And now we got Embiid in there on Przingis. Come on, man. I just gave you praise at the beginning of the video, and then you want to miss that one? To be fair, Przingis is a pretty damn good defender, and he's tall as hell. Jose Calderon looks about eight years younger going up against us. Which doesn't surprise me too much. I'm trying to make use of this mismatch because Robin Lopez is on a point guard. Nerlens, I like it. I said Nerlens was going to be at center earlier. He's at power forward here. Whatever. And uh, Stauskas open. You better make this. Jesus. The last thing I can do is say somebody's really good because then they perform poorly in the video. Shout out to Aaron Aflalo for going from a 3 and D player to one of the best shooting guards in the league back down to a 3 and D player. And then Kyle O'Quinn hits a three-pointer. This is the weirdest game ever. Second half now, down 13 points. Not like we're not used to this. But, um, Stauskas. These are the type of plays I'm talking about with Stauskas. He can do that. He's a good enough of a shooter, and his ball handling, yeah, it's not great, but in certain situations it can work. Mello kills us once again. I even had Jeremy Grant in there at times to defend Mello. None of it worked. And, um, Nerlens once again, oof. Looking, the, the flat top has never looked better for Nerlens Noel, and shout out to Big Daddy Kane because I forgot to shout him out when I make a flat top joke. The game for Jaleel pretty much went just as you saw it there. He got blocked by Robin Lopez earlier, he missed that one. Dario is still my favorite player. I think he's my favorite, you know? I said it was Covington for a minute. I think Dario Sarge is the, the guy on this team for me. But then Stauskas, wide open again. He's only like a 78 from 3, but it's an A- on the release. I don't know, ask 2K, because I ain't got no answers. And, my goodness, are we bad defensively. 
You know, Joel Embiid was in the game there, and he might not be the defender that Noel is, but I still expect him to be decent. Well, then again, nobody can be decent against the Knicks right now. Melo? Jesus. You know how sometimes people say when you take the immovable force against the unstoppable object or whatever the hell? This is like the exact opposite of that with two bad teams. Somebody's gotta be worse, right? Embiid finally woke up, so shout out to him. But it's already 11 points. And we've been down by double digits more than once in this season. Have we ever come back? No, and apparently the only way to score on us is just cut inside because we're not going to know what to do against you. It's kind of the reason why Noel is so valuable for us. Embiid finally get his groove on in the post just a little bit. I mentioned before that I do think Embiid can be converted into a power forward because his mid-range jumper isn't far off, and unlike Okafor, he's decently athletic and, uh, well, his defense isn't too far away either. It's like his mid-range. It's probably going to take Embiid like a full season to really become a power forward for us, but as of right now, he's pretty much has to play center. Looking good, though. I like it. He's effective in that pick and roll. We got to do stuff like that more often. But, um, anyway, after Melo hits this three, this game is over. We but I saved the best clip for last. And by that I mean it just happened to happen at the end of the game. Nick Stauskas looks like the greatest player ever on this drive. My goodness, did you see? Let, let's look at this again. Now yeah, he crosses over Robin Lopez, but look at that finish. My god. Nick Stauskas is going to average 20 points per game in a Sixers jersey. It's going to be beautiful. Although it's not going to happen this season. We lose. But once again, I mean, Nerlens with 20 points, he was efficient for us. Some interesting things we learned in this game, I think. And um, like I mentioned before, Jaleel Okafor, yeah, he could score in the post, but there's other parts of his game we're going to have to keep working on, but he's so far off on some of them, I don't know if he can ever get there.